Hi, I'm Zach Samsel, and this is Gabe Acosta, and today we're going to measure stream flow by floating an orange here along Ackerman Creek. Hi, I'm Zach Samsel from Thanoliville Pomo Nation Environmental Department, and today we're going to measure stream flow, aka discharge, which is the amount of water that's flowing between a cross section at any given point. Stream flow can vary depending upon the amount of rain, snowpack, and whether or not it's the warm or wet season. Having said that, we're going to measure the stream flow with some tools that you might have at home and the help of our special assistant. Hey guys, Gabe Acosta. So today we're measuring the flow of a stream. Flow is important because it defines the shape, size, and direction that the stream is going to take. This is important in water quality and habitat location. And let's not forget that stream flow and velocity help us to understand what type of organisms live within the watershed, which helps us understand their different migration patterns and spawning areas. With that in mind, let's get started. And here's a list of the things that you'll need. String, a waterproof yardstick, an orange, You'll also need camping stakes, scissors, a fishing net to get the orange out of the stream, measuring tape, and twist ties. Let's get started, shall we? The first thing that you want to do is mark an area along the creek. We use camping stakes and a string to mark the beginning line, and then 20 feet away from there, we measured another string and this is basically gonna be our racetrack, if you will, where the orange is gonna flow and we're gonna time it. After you've strung the strings, we measured it and then divided that by four and marked it into four even intervals that are marked right here. That's gonna help us to get the average depth of the creek by using a yardstick. Once you have both of the lines marked, we're gonna go back through, we're gonna check the depth at each of these, and we're gonna write it down on the handy EPA stream flow calculation sheet. Now we're gonna to go to each one of these one quarter intervals and check the depth of the creek so that we can take a composite average that's later on used in the calculation. And then obviously each of the stakes at the ends are zeros. We'll get deeper into the calculation once we've actually timed the orange. Now comes the fun part where we're gonna float this orange and measure the amount of time it takes to tra travel from this string to the next one. Are you ready? Don't go too fast, buddy. Boom, and that's all it takes, folks. Now it's time to do some math. Let's take this show inside. Now that you've filled out the EPA data form, we're ready to figure out the average cross-sectional area by using the data from the data form. We're going to start out by calculating the total width and then calculating the total depth. In calculating the average depth, we're going to take the total depth and divide that by the four intervals we marked on the line. And that gives us a total of 0.81 feet for the average depth. Then we take the total width, multiply that by the average depth, and we get our number for section 1. And now we're about to do the same for section 2. We're going to total up the total width, and then we're going to total up the total depth. Just like last time, we're going to take our total depth and divide that by the four intervals, and that'll give us the average depth. Then we take the total width, multiply that by the average depth, and we're almost ready to calculate A. Now we take the figures that we got for section one and section two, divide those by two, and that gives us A, an answer of 18.9 feet squared. Now we're gonna calculate L, which is the length of the stream reach. The next part of the equation is determining the coefficient. It'll be 0.08 if your stream has a rocky bottom, and it'll be 0.09 if the stream has a muddy bottom, as per the EPA guidance. Now we're going to determine the average travel time by totaling up all three of the timed runs that you did along the stream to determine the average time for all three. Total them all up, divide it by three, and you've got your average time, and that figure will be T. So to do a quick recap, a is 18.9, L is 20, C is 0.08, and T is 43. 
And now we're going to calculate flow, which is the average cross-sectional area times the length times the coefficient divided by the time. And that ends up giving us an average stream flow of 0.7 feet cubed per second.